Amen, amen. God's good, isn't he? Man, he has visited us here today. And uh, I'm honored to be a part of this. Turn to your neighbor and tell them they look good today. Now, you got to say it like you mean it. I'm not convinced. There you go. Everybody needs to hear that every so often, don't they? (laughs) Amen, amen. You can be seated if you would today. What an absolute honor it is to be here. Uh, My wife, Taryn, and I, and uh, our four boys. Boys, can y'all wave hello to everybody? There they are. Hi, there they are. (laughs) Yes, indeed, and we did uh, have a great time with uh, your sweet pastor and his wife last night and I said this earlier today but it's one thing to say that uh, your pastor is a great leader and sister Michelle a great leader but uh, it's something entirely different to say that they're just great people and uh, that's how Taryn and I feel about them and honored to be here Uh, also honored to see some of our cousins our family here the Smiths we have Uh, on my dad's side of the family. So this is home for us, if that's okay with y'all. We're just going to be home. Is that okay? Amen. I believe God has a very specific intention for this day. And uh, it's so interesting how we find him weaving his threads through all of our moments and our times together. And I believe that he has something very specific he wants to speak to some of you here today. And uh, he's laid this on my heart earlier in the week, and as we get through the day, it's so interesting because sometimes you come to these moments and you think, okay, Lord, this is what you said, and you're not real sure until you get in the moment with everything and you realize, oh, okay, you really are in charge. You you really do get this whole thing, don't you? And uh, so if you'll you'll just agree to join with me for a few minutes today, and I won't be long, but we're going to look at what the Lord has to say to us. And uh, I challenge you in this way as we start today, just to open your heart and say, okay, God. Whatever you want to say, that's what I'm ready to hear. Uh, This is not about anything I can preach. It's not about me in any way. It's simply about the voice of God speaking to you today. And uh, if we get ourselves in alignment with him and our hearts right before him, and man, what a great presence of God is here today. He's got something for us. Amen? And we're going to hear from him today. If you want to turn with me to the book of Mark, that's where we'll start. Just a few verses here to sort of get started. Mark chapter 10. We jump into the scripture here in a story that you know really well, and uh, with the help of God, it's going to speak to us today in in maybe a new way. Mark chapter 10, I'll read 17 down to 22. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and thy mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed since my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at the saying. Somebody say sad. Sad. He was sad at the saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. God, with your help today, we're going to open our hearts to you. Prepare the soil of our spirits and our hearts to receive the seed of your word properly. Lord, we ask you to help us to shut out every distracting thought, every intrusion into our minds and spirit that would keep us from hearing your voice today. Let us be open to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Tell your neighbor the next yes. The next yes. I'm just going to be honest with you. I like to hear yes. Amen? Like, that's a form of yes, right? Amen. Why don't, I, why don't everybody in here, just at the count of three, just say yes to me? One, two, three. Yes. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. Thank you very much. It just made me feel better. I, I like to be in a position where I hear yes from people, 
And I also like to be in a position where I can say yes to people. It's a powerful word to hear, and, and, and it's more powerful as a concept. It means there's no obstacle present that's large enough to keep this from happening. I'm with you. I'm on board. I'm decided that I'm in agreement with whatever you're saying. Yes. Why don't you practice on your neighbor? Just look them right in the eye and say, yes. Yes. You see, you just can't help but be a little bit happy when you hear yes. It's a powerful word. So I want to jump right into our story. It's about a man who said yes a lot of times. So he comes running to Jesus, and he's eager, he's anxious, he's hungry, and he's willing. He knew of Jesus. He knew who he was. Matter of fact, when he comes to him, he addresses him, and he says, good master. Good master. He knew who Jesus was. And he, he also knew where to find Jesus. He got right to him. He apparently kept up with him. He followed him on social media, and he knew where he was going to be. And he showed up at the right place. He was a follower of Jesus before our story even begins. Because he knew how to find Jesus. He knew who Jesus was. But he was ready for something a little more. He was ready for a closer relationship with Jesus. This is, this is the perfect picture of an overall good dude. He was on track. He was obedient. He was a rule follower. Yes, I've done that over and over. Yes, he came to church. He came to prayer meeting. He came to Bible study. He came to Sunday school class. And no doubt he had said yes many, many times when other people had said no. Yes, I will obey. Yes, I will submit. Yes, I will heed your word, Lord. Many, many yeses. And obviously they didn't just stop with his religious practices. He had many possessions. You know what that means? He said yes to financial restraint. He said yes to wisdom. He said, yes, I will be a good steward. Yes to the words of Solomon about using good wisdom in what you do. God called his people to be separate, and he said yes to the call of God. He was an eligible young man, and no doubt, no doubt many times along the way, he had been tempted to do something different, to take a different path. But he had turned his head away from that at every point, and he had lived a life of yes to God. Yes, I want to be a part of your group, Jesus. And I've lined up all of the right yeses in my life so I can be ready. Position myself properly by responding right at every point. I've obeyed. I've submitted. Yes, I've done it. Yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll take that step. Yes, I'll do this. Yes, I'll make the right choice. And here I am. And I'm sure that anybody who was helping Jesus organize his group of followers would have just been salivating at the thought of getting this young man on their team. I mean, he had so much to offer. He was a man of great reputation, clean background, no baggage. He had wealth. He had means. Everybody would want him on their ministry team. He was going to be a great addition to the Jesus ministry movement, and everybody was excited. New doors are going to be open because this guy's with him. New opportunities. This is a bright and shining star added onto our team. I mean, even the disciples, the core group, didn't have the pedigree this guy had. They were rough and of normal reputation and no wealth at best. This guy would be a real power addition. This was the big day. And humble, too. Oh, my goodness, so humble. He comes and he kneels down at the feet of Jesus. He, he wants to give his life to God. Where do you find such a combination of great reputation, of great wealth, of great influence, and great humility. He's got it all. A whole lot of yeses have been stacked up in his life to bring him to this point, in this moment, this encounter with Jesus. But he gets an odd response from Jesus. Everybody else is so excited. But Jesus sort of gives him the brush off at first. Almost as if to say, how strong is that yes to follow me? Let's see. Jesus pushes him back just a little bit and says, why do you call me good? There's none good but the Father. And, and then Jesus doesn't even let him answer the question. He just lays into the rules. You can't do this. 
You can't do that. And I'm sure the disciples are like, Jesus, stop. This guy, we need him. Like, we know he's good enough. Let him come. And I'm sure that they're anxious to see how is this guy going to respond to this very public examination of his life. In front of everybody, Jesus says, you have to do this. 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 And everybody's like, oh, my gosh. I hope he doesn't come to one this guy don't like. And almost as if he can't contain himself until Jesus stops. He gets to the very end, and the guy gets to answer the thing everybody wanted to hear, a big, gigantic, yes, yes. I've done all those things my whole life, Jesus. I got it. You can't push me away with obedience requirements. I've done it. I'm still a yes man. You see, Jesus, I'm a rule follower. I'm obedient. I show up. I volunteer. I serve. I'm there. I'm at the right place doing the right thing. I'm a yes guy. And I'm sure Jesus pushed back on him a little bit more because there were probably many who came wanting to be on the team. But not having prepared themselves or been willing to follow the yeses along the way. But not this guy. This man, by everybody's view that day, he was yesing his way right into Jesus' inner circle. It was about to happen. Jesus stops in the middle of their conversation and he takes a little closer look at this man and he realized that all of the obvious things are going to be yes everything up to this moment has been right he's got a long track record of good decisions he's positioned himself into a place that's perfect he's right there great appearance he does the right thing and I love what it says about Jesus' interaction here with him Because it it says Jesus looked at him almost as if to say, okay, let's lay all of that aside. Now I'm going to see you. And he looks at him, and the word says he loved him. Now, no doubt, Jesus loved the man before that point in the story. He loves all of us before we obey, after we obey. If we don't ever obey, (laughs) this man's obedience is not what garnered the love of Jesus to him. We don't earn his love by obeying. You understand that? But the willing yes statements of obedience and submission caused Jesus to stop and take take a deeper look at this young man. And it caused him to press in a little more. The positioning that this man had given himself allowed Jesus to open up to another level. And because he was right here in this moment with Jesus... Because he had prepared himself, Jesus said, okay, let's step one step further. And I just felt in my spirit this week that there's some people here this morning that have said yes to a lot of things. You're here. That's a big one. You've said, yes, I want to be a part of this. Yes, pastor, I'm on board with you. Yes. I'll do it, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll serve here, I'll serve there, I'll be on board. I've said, I'm here, I'm here, I'm ready. And in these kind of moments like today, when God's moving in a very unique way, in a very specific way, for some of you today, your encounter with God is like this. Okay, son, daughter, you've done great. Now let's step a little further together. And I'm going to look into you in a little deeper place than I have before. I'm going to step past that surface level obedience and agreement that we seem to have. It seems like on the surface that you agree with everything about me. You've done all the things. You've followed all the rules. You've positioned yourself right. Now let's get down to the next place. Jesus said to this man, now my love for you is going to do one more thing for you. We're going to give you an opportunity that will be make or break for you in the kingdom of God. You see, obedience and submission to God's plan will bring you to these places as you progress in your walk with God where he will sort of draw a line in the sand and say, okay, good. I love you. I care for you. I provide for you. 
And I will always do that. But there's something more that I have for you. And if you choose to walk this path, the doors will open. And if you don't, they won't. Now understand this. I'll still love you if you don't. But I'm opening a door for you into something different. It's so amazing to me. Taryn talked a little bit this morning about the children of Israel as their journey with the Lord. I don't understand how he kept his patience with those people. But not only did he not just strike them dead, which I think he wanted to, he kept providing for them when they continued to reject him. And God established for us a precedent about how he cares about us. That in these moments, and I believe that some of you are here in one of those moments today, where God has drawn a line in the sand for you and has said, if you stay on this side, I'm going to love you till you breathe your last breath. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to take care of you. And like with the children of Israel, their shoes didn't even wear out. I mean, food fell from the sky for them. He took care of them in their disobedience. And for some of you here today, you've said so many yeses and you've put yourself in this place. And today, this is what the Lord spoke to me this week. And this will be for some of you here today and it's going to connect in your spirit. And God's going to take you to a new place. God is saying, I'm drawing a line for you today. And it's a decision time for you. It's time for you to decide. Either I'm going to stay here where I've been. Or I'm going to take another step. And in your walk with God, you're going to find that that happens periodically. God will let you grow and let you develop and let you mature into something. And then he says, okay, now you're ready if you want to for something new. And that's what he did with this young man here. You've stacked up so many yeses before. You want to be on my team? Yes, Jesus, I do. You want to inherit eternal life? Yes, I do. You want to be, you want to be a part of what's going on? You want to come with me? Yes, I do, Jesus. You've done so much right before, and you should have done all of those things right, and they're great, but Jesus said, there's one more yes I need from you. I need one more. And it was this next yes that would determine his destiny. This next yes is what determines how we know who you are in the Scriptures. And at this moment, and here's the word for some of us here today, at this moment, for this young man, all of the other yeses didn't matter anymore. They brought you to this place. And now the Lord's saying, okay, let's see. I'm going to give you this chance. All the yeses before for this young man, they fell down and they stumbled over this next yes. Because it didn't come. All the preparation all the obedience, all the submission and the hunger and the willingness and the sacrifice met its match because there was a place that Jesus saw in him that had not been yes yet. There was still a no place inside. There was still a not yet place lurking underneath all of that surface obedience, all of that compliance, all of that willingness underneath it. There was something that only his Savior, his Master, could see. Because with each step you get closer to Jesus, he requires a deeper yes. And with each progressive one, he brings you closer to him. He opens up new doors for you. And I just felt in my spirit this week, your pastor has cast an incredible vision for you guys. He's loved you. He's carried you. He's walked beside you. And he's followed after the leading of God to bring you to this place. And there are some of you here today. I think everybody here is on board. You're ready. You're, you're, you're yes, yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. But for some of you here, this was the word of the Lord this week. God's been speaking to some of you saying, okay, you have. And I'm so thankful and I'm so proud of you. But there's something I've been dealing with you about. A new level of commitment a new level of obedience, a new level of submission, 
a new level of dependency on me, a new level of trust. I've been speaking to you about this. And maybe it's in the back of your mind, and even now as I talk to you about it, it kind of begins to resonate with you and say, yeah, I've been feeling something. I'm not real sure what to do with it. God's been dealing with me. Yeah, it's not that I'm not committed. I'm in it. But God's been, God's been saying, come on, there's, a, there's this one little thing I want you to do. There's another thing, another step. I've got another door for you. I've got a new level of openness. I've got a new level of commitment that I'm calling on you for. A deep heart level, yes. Because when this man in the story should have had a yes prepared, just one more, he in fact didn't have it. There was no next yes. In fact, it was a hard no. Maybe his first no ever. Maybe he'd never been pushed on this particular issue before. See, Jesus has a way of seeing into our hearts and knowing where the no's are hiding. He knows even when we don't know. <laughs> and as we get closer to him and we kneel before him, we begin to seek a closer walk with him and we say things like, yes, I'm on board with you, Pastor. Yes, I want this. I want revival. I want to see things change. I want to see souls saved. I want to see... God's will be done, and we mean every bit of that. I'm not taking anything away from that. We're on it. We're, yes, we are. Yes, we are. And the more we seek that, God says, yes, yes, yes. And as we get closer and closer to him, he starts to look at us and say, okay, I've got a new place for you. I've got a new level of anointing for you. I've got a new ministry. I'm dying to birth in you. I've got it ready for you, but there's a little something I need from you. I just need a little deeper level of commitment. I need you to dig into yourself. Like Taryn taught this morning, I need you to open up some of that brokenness to me. Because where I want to take you is going to require a deeper level of wholeness. Because when God begins to want to position you in places of influence with people, you become more exposed. And God says, I'm ready to take you there. You're prepared for it. You've brought yourself to the right place. But I've got to do a little tune-up with you. Because if I put you there without doing that, you're going to get hurt. And so there is a new place for you, but it's going to require some new steps from you. And God has been dealing with some of you about this. He's been saying to you, there's some things that I need to have of yours. And that's not that you don't love me. It's not that you're not committed. It's not an indictment of anything you've ever done before. This is new. This is new. This is not course correction. This is new opportunity. And there's so much on the horizon for you. God is speaking to some of you. And, and while we're saying this even, it's being quickened in your spirit because God's been dealing with you about things. There's been some things that you've had in your life that you've done, you've participated in, patterns of life, habits of life, none of which are wrong but that recently has begun to feel like it didn't fit you right anymore. Relationships that you've had in your life that all of a sudden seem to be an odd fit. All of a sudden it, it feels like, like the clothes don't quite fit you anymore. You haven't done anything wrong and you, you may have even said to God, well, what's wrong? Why don't, I don't feel right. Something doesn't feel right. And God's speaking to some of you here today, saying, I've brought about a holy discomfort for you. For the sake of drawing you to me, so that I can say, yes, 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 come this way. Shake that thing off. Because here's what you got to understand about how God works. Things that are appropriate for one season of your life, things that are appropriate for one season of your ministry, Things that are appropriate for one level of anointing many times have to be shed to move to another level. Were those things wrong or bad? Not at all. Totally appropriate to get you where you are. But there are times and opportunities in your walk with God where he's going to say it's time to shake that old thing off. It was right, but it's over. And now I'm trying to take you to something new. 
Now, what we're talking about is real maturity in God. But for some of you here, God has been speaking to you about some of these things. And maybe you didn't even have the words to put to it until now when God's dealing with you in this moment. Maybe you have just felt that. Something tugging at you. Something pulling at you different. Maybe you've kind of been on the fringes a little bit. And you've been feeling like the, the call to really dig in and get involved here has been there. But it just feels like it requires something of you that you don't have. It's not your, it hasn't been, your life would have to shift a little. You've got to change some things. You've got to, and maybe you've just been right on the edge of it. And if that's you today, God is speaking to you and saying, yes, that's, that's me. I'm telling you, there's some new things. And maybe you've been in this a long, long time. Maybe this is your life. Maybe you've served the Lord for 40, 50 years. But lately you've been feeling a really stirring in your spirit. Maybe you just get in God's presence and all you can do is just weep. You get in God's presence and you just cry and you feel this deep thing pulling and you don't know what to do with it. And maybe even initially you think something's wrong with me. I don't know what's going on, God. I, I don't feel connected like I used to. I don't feel. And God's beginning to stir in you. This is how he works with us. He's beginning to stir in you and dig in you a little bit. And he's saying, there's something I've got for you. And our response to that is what makes all the difference. So in that moment, in a moment like today, when God has come and brought this opportunity to you, our response is, okay, God, I come to you with it. Here it is. I don't understand what you want from me. I don't know what it is you need. But I know that you've positioned me here. And you've got something more for me. And friends, this church body right here, the influence that this church body can have in all of this whole region of Louisiana, the sky is the limit. The sky is the limit. The difference will be in the yeses. The difference will be in the people who on a day like today, and it doesn't have to be today, but the difference will be that on a day like today when God's dealing with you, you just say, okay, God, I don't get this. <laughs> I don't understand it. But I know you've been dealing with me about this. I've been living at this particular level for a long while. And I'm saved and I'm going to glory. I'm not backslidden. Nothing's wrong. But I'm where I've been for a long while. And God's wise. You know that? He leaves us where we need to be until we're ready to go somewhere else. Until we're ready to move to a next level, he lets us stay. Because in those places where we become comfortable, we gain strength. And we gain endurance. And we build those muscles that we need to build in the spirit. And then he says, okay, now I'm ready for you. Now you've been doing this ministry level. Now I have something next for you. I have something different for you. I've got a new anointing that you've never experienced that I'm ready to just set right on you. But you've got to be willing. You've got to be willing. Jesus often asks for a yes from us from a place that has always been a not yet <laughs> or a no or maybe I'm not even sure what that is Lord I just want you to take a minute with me we're going to move on but I want you to take just a second would you close your eyes with me for just a moment everybody here just take a moment <laughs> Open up your mind and your spirit to what the Lord would speak to you right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 You know, you can't live on yesterday's yeses. You can't live on former obedience. God's calling you to a new level of obedience and submission today. And you know what? It doesn't have to come with a whole lot of fanfare. It doesn't have to come with a whole lot of hype. 
Matter of fact, in these moments, it's almost better to not have that because these are decisions that have to be made. Choices that have to be made. The story in the scripture when Jesus first encounters Peter and James and John, he comes to them in their world at the seashore. He talks to Peter for the first time. Peter does a favor for him, helps him out. Jesus says, hey, I got something for you. Why don't you just go out and cast your nets for a big catch of fish? Peter, the expert fisherman, he said, Lord, I've been fishing all night. There's nothing out there. I've done this my whole life. I'm comfortable with where I am. I know what you're doing. I know, I know, man, I know what I'm doing. I've, I've got this. I know what the parameters are of what I can do. I know where my boundaries are. I'm an expert at this location. I've fished this water my whole life. I'm settled in it. I make a living at it. I contribute. I'm good. He could have responded like that and been totally justified. What did Jesus know about fishing? This is a carpenter. You don't know. You don't know this. I'm comfortable here, Lord. I got a good rut dug in right here. This is how I'm living. And all it was, the line in the sand for Peter was one conversation with Jesus. He said, go put your nets out for a catch. And somewhere in his mind, something spoke to him. And his spirit, it connected. And all of those things that he probably thought, he pushed aside. And he said, nevertheless, at thy word, I'll do it. Nevertheless, which means, I, I don't know. I, I don't really understand that. I, I mean, I don't, I don't really have a way to figure out that this is going to make any difference, Lord. Uh, when I look at it, it looks like I'm okay. It looks like I'm doing the things I should have done. I fished using all the techniques that have brought me to this place in my life, and I caught nothing. Tomorrow I'll come back, I'll probably catch something. I know how this goes. This is where I'm comfortable. This is my pattern. This is my routine. This is my habit. I'm an expert here. I know what I'm doing. He could have easily been justified saying, thanks, I'll be back tomorrow. And nobody would have thought anything wrong about it. But he had a moment like this one right here for some of you. But Jesus said, hey, go do this thing. And he said, all right, at thy word I will. The question for you is, what's he saying to you? What's he saying? This is very unusual this morning. But without a doubt, God has been saying some things to some of you. And I'm standing here today as a confirmation in the spirit, not because of me, but because God wants you to know the thing I've been saying to you, the thing you've been feeling. Maybe you've had a little hesitation. Maybe there's been a little fear. Maybe there's been a little worry about what is this person going to think or what's that person going to think or, or Lord, you know, my history, you know, my past, you know, I can't, you know, and we've put limitations on ourselves. And because of that, we've questioned that what we actually hear and feel is actually God. And we say, I don't, I, that must not be you, Lord, because that doesn't make sense. That must not be you, Lord. I've fished all night. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. But the difference for Peter, from that moment, he could have been a fisherman the rest of his life. But he ended up, up on this rock. I have built my church. Peter, here's the keys to the kingdom. Here's the, here's the, the sermon on the day of Pentecost that changed history. And it all hinged on one single Nevertheless, at thy word, I'll do it. I don't understand it, Lord. I don't know where it's going to take me. I may go back out here and look like a fool, dropping these nets again for the hundredth time tonight. But I'm not going to count all those costs. It's just going to be a yes. A yes. I'm just trying to plant this seed in your spirit this morning. God's asking for a yes from some of you. And you know exactly what he's speaking to you. 
One more thing and we're done. Abraham was given a promised child, a son, Isaac, special, special. This is the one. Your seed's going to multiply. It's going to fill the earth. You got all this sands of the sea and stars. And this is, this is the child. And God shows up with an absolutely ridiculous request. It made no sense in the world. Take your son. Let's go up the hill. Your only son. The, the, only, one I, the only one you have. And let's go sacrifice him. Whew. But God, I'm on the path already. We already got this laid out. Like, this is behind us. I've already said yes to everything you've ever asked me. Matter of fact, I left my home and my family. I've said yes to you at every point. Here I am. I've done it. I'm in the church. I'm here on Sunday morning. I serve. I do this. I volunteer here. I'm involved. I'm engaged. I do all this stuff. God, why are you bothering me again? I've done, haven't I done enough to be in this already? The day closed out. It's one of the most impacting scriptures in all of the Bible to me. Immediately after God makes that request to Abraham. The next verse says, And he rose early the next morning. And he packed up the mule. And he grabbed his boy. And he took off. No question. No hesitation. No doubting. Just a yes. And when it was all done, and the Lord, you know the story, the Lord provided the ram, and the sacrifice was there, and he looked at Abraham, and he said, now I know that I can trust you. Now I know that you fear me. Now I can do it. Now I can. There was a whole lot of yeses that brought you to that moment, but it was this next one that let me know where you really are. Now, friends, God will love you wherever you are. He will. Isn't that amazing? He loves us at whatever level we choose. But for some of you here today, there's another, there's another one, a next level, another yes, a next place of anointing that God's ready for you. And you know what? It may be something small and simple in your life. It may be a, it may be a new anointing to be a husband. It may be a new anointing to be a right father or mother. It may be a new anointing to lead your family in a way that you've always wished that you could. It may be a new anointing to reach out to your neighbor in a way that you've never been able to connect. It may be a new anointing into a particular ministry here in church. It may be a new anointing you've never even expected or experienced. And it hinges today on one thing. God, yes, I will. Yes, I will. See, today is not the difference in being saved or not saved. That's a yes you've probably already crossed with God. Where we are today is how much of me are you going to get, God? How much of me are you going to get? Will you stand with me for a moment? This is really simple, and this is what the Lord led me to today. That today is a decision day for some of you. The scripture of the day has been, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. It'd be really great if that was something we only had to do one time. If we could say, yes, Lord, I'm yours, I'm in, and then that was it forever, unfortunately, it's not. God brings us to new places where we have to continue to seek him first over everything in our lives, over and over and over. And let me tell you this about it, and I'm done. God loves every one of you enough to orchestrate this particular day to speak to you about this thing. And that's what he's done for some of you here today. And you'll walk out of here. Pastor may not know it today. Nobody around you may know it. But you're going to walk out of here today with a new yes in your spirit. And God's going to begin to open some things up to you. And you're going to see new opportunities. You're going to see new anointing. You're going to see a new fellowship and a new closeness with God. It's coming. Would you join me down here this morning? And as you take a step this way, everybody, I want everybody, as you take a step this way, all you're saying is, okay, God, here's another yes I've got for you. I got another one. Lord, whatever it is you've been speaking to me, the things that you've asked me to lay aside in my life, the thing that the very specific thing you've asked me to, to step out on today, I'm here to do it. Lord, in a very simple way today, I'm just here to say yes to you. 